All right. Yeah. So I, the... I also was able to track it and drop it like that. That picture worked for me. Oh, okay, good. So you great. Um, I don't know why it's not. Anyway, so let's start with the the pot, and I'm gonna just double click on the the cube here, and hit X to delete it. In Blender, X is delete. Um, and also on the right side of your your screen, you'll see all this this like big list of hotkeys. So these are just the most common hotkeys that we're always using. So for example, like um, middle mouse is rotate, control middle mouse is zoom, and then shift middle mouse is pan. And if you ever get lost here, let's say you're you're just play around with those three and just go crazy with it. It doesn't matter what you do. And then if you get really lost, you can always go control shift middle mouse to teleport back to the beginning. So that'll teleport you back to whatever you have selected. This is really nice. Control shift middle mouse. Okay, so now I'm going to double click on this this cube and then hit X to delete it. And then now uh, I want to go to front view. So to do that, I'm pressing V for views pie. So when I pr as soon as I press V, I should see this little pie menu that pops up. And then let's go to the front view. Okay. Now it looks like just empty, and you should see this pink dot in the center. In the center, right? Just make sure that you see the pink dot as soon as you press V and front view. And think of the pink dot as like the bottom of our pot. So now, so now I'm going to hold Control and just start clicking. Oh, sorry. I'm going to go Control Space and click on verts. So I and verts are in 3D are just points. So click on verts slash points. And now if I press hold down control and left click, I'll start to draw the outline of a pot shape, like the profile of the pot, like that. So I'm going to do this again, guys. Don't worry. Uh, but basically, we're just drawing a profile in space like this, holding down control and left click. And then, once you have a profile, we're going to go add to this uh, bottom left area where the wrench is, and say add modifier and screw. And that's going to make the pot. Okay, so I'm going to let, let me do that again because I know some, probably some people missed it. So, shift A. So, this is back in the beginning with the with just the cube I'm hitting X to delete the cube I'm double clicking on it hitting X and then now I need to go to front view so V front view make sure the pink dot is kind of like in the middle center uh, the bottom of the pot so this is like the the lower face of the pot and then hold control <coughs> uh, press sorry hit control space which will give you the select pie this this can this brings us into different types of uh, selection, so I'm going to vert the the top left is verts. Now when I'm in verts, I'm going to hold Control and just left click, left click, left click, holding Control this whole time, and I'm just drawing the outline of a of a pot like that. Any questions on this? Is this working? This is working, but do you draw just a mirror image of the the pot? No, no, no. I'm only drawing one edge of the pot, like just the right side of the pot, right of the pot. kind of. Right. That's it. That's it. Because we're gonna revolve it after. So move is spacebar. So. Oh, you don't need you don't need to be in object mode. So, so first, we we are in face, and um, also faces, edges, and inverts are these three up up on the top here, these three little icons. So you can also switch it here to verts. But basically, I just want to hit X to delete all the faces. Or actually, I mean, you can switch to verts here first, and then hit X to delete it. And that's it. So once we're in verts, 
we just need to go to front view so V front view and then control left click and that's gonna start placing verts here these little points are verts and then you just do like that until you have the the right side profile of a pot um, is it possible to add verts after like in in between two of them yes you can but I would say to keep it for now just keep it like a very simple PlayStation 1 version so I'm, I'm making it very very chunky because we're gonna smooth it after um, oh, okay versus like I I suggest I mean don't don't go like this like because that's that's too uh, too smooth for what we need we want a very crappy chunky version like this okay and and you can hit control X to get rid of verts if you need to so if you so if you click on one and hit control X that kind of erases it you can also hit B to kind of split one vert into two if you need to just click on it and hit B and move your mouse a little bit okay I think it's the one that's already in there. And then if you need to move them again, you just click one and then press spacebar to move it. Okay. So we can also maybe I'll get this bottom one and hit B and make, make kind of a corner there, like just two points on the corner. So select the bottom one, press B, move the mouse a little bit, make a corner like that. Okay. So once we have the profile here in space, just make sure that our, our green line is going this way and it's kind of arranged like that and the, the pink dot is in the middle. Next we're going to go add modifier. This modifier thing, you'll you'll see it what, if you switch on these tabs, just switch to the wrench. And then now you can say the blue wrench, sorry, and then go add modifier. And the one we're looking for is called screw. And it's kind of like a revolve type of operation. And there we are. We have this ugly looking thing. All right. So it looks horrible right now. Um, I think you have to turn on this calc order thing. So just turn that on. This is an option inside of the screw modifier. So calc order, just check that on. I got a quick question. Yeah. If you don't mind. Um, I'm on a Mac and I can't get the uh, that menu to open where it's like command space. Um, I already shut off the spotlight shortcut in like system press though. Um, um, try is there any other way I can get to that? Try control space. Yeah, control space worked. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's working. Cool. All right. So. Okay. Oh yeah. Any any other questions so far, guys? I know. I know we're going kind of fast. Uh, just uh, what's what's undo? Uh, control Z. Is undo. Sorry, um, I also have a question. What does calc order do? Because on mine, it looks fine to begin with, but calc order doesn't do anything. It doesn't um, change anything. It's yeah. it like when you do bevels on here, it kind of like screws up the. I don't know what it. It it just. It's dumb. This or, this option shouldn't even be there. But you just need it if you if you're doing adding extra points or beveling it. It gets all messed up, and you need to do this calc order thing. Oh, so it's only if you added points afterwards. So yeah. You screw. Exactly, because the points go in okay. order, like in the order that you add them, I guess. And then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it gets confused. Okay. Anyway, so here we are. It's we we got the screw in here. I I'm still very chunky, like not much detail here. But if I hit tab, I'm just just gonna press tab. It adds another modifier here. This is a subsurf, this subsurf base modifier here. If I hit tab again, it turns it on and off while I'm hovering in the in the viewport, and it just smooths it out for us. So that way we can keep our our model very flexible. We can continue adjusting the shape using um, our our simple simple geometry without having to worry about the smoothness. Okay, so that's just tab. All right, so after that we can, l let's say you want some thickness like a, a rim on the top, you can do add modifier 
And there's another one here called solidify. This will just give it some thickness. So let's try solidify. Okay. So there it is. You, you can adjust. It's right here underneath the subsurf base. You can adjust the thickness of it here. And I think that's fine. Pretty cool, right? I mean, the. Great. Yeah, it's easy. That's, that's awesome. Uh, it's excuse cool. Me. Sorry. Excuse me? Yeah. Uh, um, from where did you get the vortexes? Sorry. The that one it's up here on the top these three just make sure you're on this one with the dot on it okay and then to create them you just hold down control and left and left click and just draw like that in I'm in side view or sorry front view here um, okay oh uh, sorry do you yep. just go back uh, to right after uh, you did this calc order, mm -hmm. uh, I missed. I got lost on the steps after that. Okay. So okay, so so from here we we have the profile. We're going add modifier and then screw. And if your thing looks horrible like this, like mine, it's it's all weird looking. I'm gonna hit calc order to fix it, and then I'm pressing tab. You can press tab as many times as you want. It just turns it on and off. And okay. it, it makes it smooth or not smooth. And then after that, we're going here to the top where it says add modifier. And then uh, solidify. This one will give it a little bit of thickness. We can um, adjust it inside of the solidify uh, modifier. And there we go. Very nice and flexible. So. Next thing is I want to try to get some dirt, some pebbles in here. And we're going to use uh, physics and gravity and all that cool stuff. So let's let's go control space again. This is our select pie. And this time I want to make a new object. So I'm going to go down to object selection mode. So now the whole outline of our object turns pink, which means we're in object selection mode. And also, guys, you can see your objects on the top right. Here's a little list of all of our objects in the scene. This one, I mean, it's it's called cube, but you can name it whatever. So here, let's just name it pot enter. Just by double clicking on the on the the name, you can rename it. Okay. Uh, I have a. Yep. So I got another dumb question. Um. So if. <laughs> It's back to the vert thing though. Like, uh, if I go to the vert mode, um, when I click on it, like it's not adding any points. It's probably something I, I didn't do right. You have to hold Control and then you can click. No. While you're. Yeah, just hold just hold Control and left click, and then you should start spawning points uh, like this. Is it working? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry for the dumb question. Thank cool. you. No problem. All right. Um, so now we are. I'm. I'm gonna record this too, or it is. I'm recording it right now, guys. So we'll, I'm gonna post it on YouTube later. Um, all right. What? What's next? The the dirt. Uh, the 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 pebbles. So I'm in object mode now. So control space down to object mode. You should see the outline of your whole entire pot. And then to add something, we we're gonna use Shift A. Shift A is our add add menu so shift a right here add and then up on top where, where it says mesh it, mesh I'm going in there and then let's get a cylinder construct a cylinder mesh okay now where the hell did my cylinder go it vanished somehow oh shit why is it in there Okay, for some reason mine popped up inside of helpers. So drag that into main. Sorry, let me do that again. Click on this main section. Oh, I got a little bit of echo from somebody. Uh, if you have your speakers on, please use headphones. Okay, so we're on main. 
this is our collection this this kind of like an organizational layer and then shift a and then cylinder okay there's our cylinder object I can press s to scale it I'm gonna scale it down just move my mouse I'm just pressing s and moving my mouse I'm not holding my mouse down or anything I'm just pressing s hover moving my mouse and then spacebar is regular move so I'm just clicking spacebar one time I'm not holding it down because if I hold down spacebar it it like goes crazy like this so make sure you just basically just click spacebar one time and then you can hover and move your mouse around okay now if I want to go straight up and down I'm gonna have to lock it in the up and down direction I'm gonna press Z as in uh, zebra to lock it up and down and you you might be thinking like wow what is what does Z have to do with up um, well really uh, it's kind of arbitrary but in 3d the directions are named X Y and Z and you can see them up here on the on the top right of your viewport the red X the green Y and the blue Z so those are just that's just what we call the, the directions in 3d X Y and Z so in this case, X is like left and right, Y is front and back, and Z is up and down. And you can type in those letters to lock it in those directions when you're in a move tool. Okay, so here we are. We got our cylinder. Now I want to make this cylinder into sort of a cup with an open top. So I'm going to go again, control space for the selection pie. And I want to select my top face so I'm gonna go grab face selection mode okay now we're in faces mode I can click on individual um, faces in this case I just want the top face and then hit X to delete it maybe grab the bottom face I, I want to keep the bottom face because it's a cup it's we're gonna catch the the pebbles inside this cup so again spacebar to move it, Z to lock it in the up direction. I, I just need kind of a shallow cup like this. Okay. Um, any questions on this part, guys? Feel free to stop me at any point. Oh, how did you make it shallow again? Make the cup uh, shallow? I grabbed so we're still in faces mode so we can select any of these faces right um, so you just want to pick the bottom face and then move it so spacebar and then Z to move it up and down so I'm just making it like that shallow got it okay great so so next we need to make some pebbles I'm gonna go back into object mode because we're adding a new object so control space down to object mode and then shift A again and in this case I'm gonna use a cube because I, I'm just gonna keep it simple in this case because we're who knows what kind of compute potato computers that we're all using so here we are there's a pebble we can go S and Z if you wanna squish it in the up and down direction Again, that's S, move your mouse, and then press Z, and it locks it in the up and down direction. If you press S regular, it, it just scales in every direction. Okay, so I'm just scaling it to be about the size of a, of a pebble. And then, now we're going to give it some physics real quick. So... Sorry, uh, Vaughn, I have a question. I think I was, I hit the wrong, I, I think I revolted to vi uh, reverted to vanilla, like, shortcuts, and all of my objects disappeared, and I think it's just, like, isolated or hidden everything. Oh, okay, um, okay. So, if you, if you press Z and go down to isolate, that might unhide everything, possibly. Perfect, yeah, yeah, that did it, yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, Z and down to isolate. Thanks, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this cup, we're going to give it physics first. This is going to be our catcher object. So down below the wrench where we added the modifiers, down, down, ah, here we are. This is 
physics and what we want is a rigid body so click on rigid body again this this tab is like right under the wrench tab oh actually two under the wrench tab and then click on rigid body okay so now uh, the type is active I'm going to click on active and change it to passive because this is just going to catch stuff. It's not going to really move. So change it to passive. And then also change the shape here where it says convex hull. Click on convex hull and change that to mesh. So this is going to use the actual shape here, the mesh shape as a cup. Okay. Next, we're going to grab the pebble. So just click on that. Make sure you're in object mode, so control space down to object. So you can select different objects. OK, this one, again, rigid body. But this one is, is going to be active. This one's going to move around. And convex hole is fine in this case. So now all we have to do is play our animation. So I'm going to press period on the keyboard just regular period and it should drop just like that right yeah so I'm gonna do this again because I know this probably didn't work the first time so control space down to object shift A search for a cylinder I'm moving it I'm scaling it moving it and then delete the top face so control space to face hit X to del grab the top face hit X and then get get the top the bottom one make it kind of shallow cup now we're going down to physics below the, the wrench tab hit rigid body change it from active to passive okay and then back to object mode so control space down to object mode shift a now we're adding a cube object and just scaling it SZ to make it like a pebble shape about there and then rigid body again and then press period oh shoot so I, I forgot to change the rigid body shape of my cup and that's why it's like not working properly so this cup I'm gonna go back to the cup and change it the shape from convex hull to mesh and now it works any questions on this part This might be like a really bad question to ask right now, but none of my hotkeys are working. All right. <laughs> yeah, same problem. I can't even get object mode to come up and get the cylinder. Okay, if it's not working, you can also get object mode up here on the top left. So just switch this. You, you're probably in edit mode, so switch that to object mode. And then you can go shift A and add stuff. Does that work? Oh, okay, shift A. I was already in edit mode, but I didn't know oh, the shift A thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Now we have one pebble. That's, that's cool, but we want a billion pebbles. So I'm going to get this one, press Alt-D to duplicate it. I'm, I'm pressing Z to lock it in the up direction left click to position it there and then right after that you can hit shift R to repeat it you can even hold down shift R like a thousand times and then when we play it it's gonna drop all the pebbles in <laughs> and they kinda like dance around a little bit uh, can you see the hotkeys again for duplicating? Yeah. So, definitely, let's do that again. So let's say we, we just have one pebble. And you're going to grab it. Hit Alt-D. Alt-D as in dog. Uh, move your mouse a little bit, and then press Z to lock it up and down. So I'm just going to lock uh, move it up a tiny bit, and then left-click. Now, right after that, 
I'm not going to press, I, I'm just going to press Shift R, and that should repeat the last tool that we did. So this is going to repeat the, the duplication that we did. And if you hold down Shift R, it's gonna, just going to keep going forever. Okay, so it's a little bit tricky, guys, because this is all in one tool. So one more time, you press Alt D, then you press Z, make it about this spacing, and then left click. Now that that tool has been completed, that was one duplicate tool. Now we just got to hit Shift R to repeat the last tool that we did. So as soon as I do that sort of like the link duplicate, it just snaps and, and I move it up in the Z direction. It just snaps back to the original location and I can see it's added it into the scene, but it just snaps into like the exact oh. same space as the... Um, okay, here's another thing. Um, you can change this one here. Like change, click on the le top left of this area where your image is. Change it to a timeline. Oh. And nine. and try, you can bring it back to frame one, or you can also press shift period to bring it back to frame one. Um, this this might be something with the the simulation is like freaking out because it's not on frame one. So sorry guys, I forgot to mention. Press shift period to go back to frame one, then Alt D Z left click, and that should work, right? And then Shift R bunch of times. Sorry, do you yeah. repeating that? Mm -hmm. uh. Yeah, so hit shift period to go back to frame one and then grab this alt D Z left click and then shift R. Um, it, it continues to play um, or Oh, sorry. Press press period to stop to stop the oh. playing and then shift period will bring you back to the frame 1. Oh. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. And I want to put this kind of close. So basically whenever you're changing these physics objects, you have to do it at frame 1. Otherwise it like it doesn't like that. So I don't know why. You just have to put it at frame 1. So, after it's at frame one, uh, how do I duplicate them again? Sorry. You pick one, you hit Alt D, Z, and then left, move it a little bit, and then left click. So, Alt D, Z, move your mouse, left click, and then Shift R. Oh. Oh, cool. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, this is a They're tricky one. They're falling through the the. I just. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough. Yeah. So okay. if they're but falling through, yeah. here. Let's say your cup is down here. They're gonna fall through. So you gotta put it like kind of close ish, and then they should catch, hopefully. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I know this is crazy, guys. There's a lot of stuff happening all at once. <laughs> but um, we're almost there. So once you're happy with this, your your pebbles, I don't know how many you, you want, whatever. I mean, maybe I need a couple more. I'll just Alt-D a few on the sides. Try to make sure they don't fall through by just putting them kind of closer to the cup. Now it's getting a little bit slow because it has to think a little bit more the more pebbles you put in there. But if you keep hitting shift period it'll uh, reset the timeline and you can kind of preview what's happening. Is this stuff working, guys? Is it, uh, are the physics happening? Um. No. Okay. <laughs> it's happening, but they they seem to be hovering over the the cup. So you gotta pick the cup. Make sure the collision shape is on mesh. 
uh, by default it'll be on convex hull which that won't work for us for like it doesn't work for negative shapes so this has to be on mesh on the cup thank you yeah seems to me like calculating it slightly differently and more and like more effectively each time it goes through the loop um like yeah it's just all okay yeah it's like collecting more frames basically each time you go through in, in, in order to duplicate the stacks uh how did you get the stacks i just did alt d again i just grabbed uh, made a box around them and then alt d did you like move them in because it looks like you moved them, like uh, you duplicated them, and then you like moved them so that they would fall. Yes, like. yes, sir. I moved them. I moved them to the side. Okay, so here we are. Some kind of pebble action. I guess these aren't the best pebbles in the world, but mm -hmm. uh, when when I'm happy with this, I'm gonna just cut my losses and say I'm happy here and select all these pebbles. If your your other if your pot is in the way, just move it. Just move it down. Spacebar Z. Move it out of the way. Now you can select all of this stuff and go object up here where it says object. This blue object thing, and then go down to rigid body, and then um, inside of rigid body you can say apply transformation. That should make it so that they, they stay there. And then after that, I'm going to go object, object, rigid body, and remove. You might have to shift click one on one of these to make them pink so that, so that we have an active object. Otherwise, you won't have that remove option. But anyway, go object, rigid body, and remove. OK, so now. If I press play, these should not move anymore. Except for those ones, which I'm just going to delete. OK. And now I can just move these down into our pot. Mine didn't come out that pretty. I hope you guys look better than mine. <laughs> um, okay. Are you guys doing okay? I'm having a bit of problems with the simulation. It still kind of falls through some of the time. I need to make more pebbles. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I'm not really happy with my simulation. I'm going to try it again. So one more time. Let's go... Sh Cylinder. I'm grabbing the top face, rigid body, make it passive, make it mesh. This time, I'm, instead of the cube, I'm going to try um, an Ico sphere as a pebble. I think this might look cooler. Ooh. SZ to squish it into a pebble shape. Yeah, this will probably be better. And then rigid body on the icosphere. Make sure that's active. Okay, everything's fine. Press play. Cool. Now I'm going to go Alt D, move it up, Shift R. And maybe this time I'll make them a little more like evenly dis distributed. Just using Alt D here. Okay, let's see if this works better. Perfect. I, I have too many. Let me get rid of some. They look really delicious. Yeah, they look like <laughs> Mentos, right? Like crackers or something. <laughs> crackers. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm much happier with this one. I think this is way cooler. So when I'm, I press period to pause the, the, the simulation and then again to freeze it because I want them to stay there forever. So I'm just going to grab everything, all of this stuff, go to object, this little object menu on the top, and then go down to rigid body and say apply transformation. That's just going to like freeze the position of everything. 
Okay, and those then two hanging on the edge look like eyeballs. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cookie monster. Yeah. Cracker monster. So object, rigid body, and then remove. That's gonna turn off all simulation on them now that we froze the position. Okay, and then now if we we play, it's frozen. Everything is frozen except for these stragglers over here. I'm just gonna delete those two. And maybe these two. Okay, so I can get rid of the cup now. And maybe get rid of some of these underneath. I don't even need that many. We just want to cover it so like it's just for the top for show. And then just press S to scale them so that they sit inside the pot. Okay, much better. So the next thing, the, the next challenge is these uh, plump little jelly, jelly bean looking things. So we're gonna go Shift A again in object mode so make sure you're in object mode, shift A, and add a cube. Which doesn't make sense because these things uh, do not look like cubes at all, but they will in a, in a minute. So let's see. Um, with the, the cube here, it, it has a pink dot in the middle. And just like the, the pink dot in the beginning, I want it to be kind of like at the bottom of one of these petals so or maybe not the bottom but like at the beginning so I'm gonna build it from the side so let's go control space faces grab select all those faces of the box press um, spacebar and then spacebar again will lock it in the Y direction so spacebar spacebar that's gonna lock us and I just want to push this so that it's like kind of in front of the the pink dot like just right at the, the edge of the pink dot okay so now we can grab this face hit s to scale it in maybe this is like the bottom of the pe pedal and then we can grab this face on the top and hit shift space to extrude it out like that shift space and then s so one more time Shift A, add a cube, bring it in S to make it small, S Z to squ squish it a little bit, and then control space faces. So I, I switch to faces when I know that I want to do like more specific changes on this cube. So I'm gonna grab all the faces, spacebar, spacebar. I'm just trying to get it right on the edge of the, the pink dot. Now I'll grab this face that's near the pink dot and press S to scale it and then grab the other face and hit shift space to extrude it and then S to scale it we're kind of making a diamond type shape sorry can I just ask you to quickly rewind I, I should be able to catch up the other steps but like to stop the animation f from being modified like to bake to to bake like it um, okay, to so to, to bake it, you select all the, all of these, and you, and they got to be like where you want them now, right? Okay. So does it matter if you've already if you also highlight the cup as well or? Yeah, the cup is fine too. Cup. So just make sure that they're they're in the position that you want them to be frozen. Yeah. And then go object up here, uh, rigid body, and then apply, transformation, and then okay. again object rigid body and remove will get rid of all the physics on them. Okay, thank you, sorry. Yeah. I, I was struggling with the step before, so I, I became, yeah, yeah, I no, fell behind. No problem. Okay, so, Thanks. okay, this pedal here. Now I'm gonna go to verts, actually. So control space, verts, make a box around these, these ones over here, and press spacebar, spacebar. Because it, to me, it looks like these are sort of like the curve of them is sort of leaning towards the the top of them so something like that and then it gets really pointy at the top um, and then we can do tab to see what our shape looks like 
So just press tab to toggle between the two and maybe adjust it a little bit. You know, maybe it should be wider. So S X will, will let you make it wider if we just grab the middle parts. Um, okay. Are you guys doing okay on this on the the pedal, or it, is anybody on the pedal part right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm on the pedal. Do you like just extrude a face out and then just make the other? Uh, uh, sorry, because I was behind. Like here, let's go. Um, cube. Sorry. We have a cube <laughs> here. S. Yeah. Oops. Oh, sorry. S. All right. Control space face. Now we have uh, the faces. And I'm just going to kind of move it in this direction. Grab this one. S. Grab this one. Shift space. And then S to make like a diamond. Okay. And then you can hit tab to preview it. And in this case, I want to make, let's say I want to make the middle wider, but since I'm in faces, I can't really select just the middle. So I need either edges or verts to be able to select the middle. So control space, verts, control space, edges, either one. And then I can scale the middle a little bit. Okay. So I think that's good. Can make it more more juicy. <laughs> uh, and the tinier this point is, the more pointy the end becomes. Some of these succulents, like they even, you can extrude the end, and they they make like this kind of a point at the end. It's up to you. And also, if you want, you can. Um, try to maybe move the top point up and rotate it you can go rx to rotate So again, um, th I had something like this. It's it's kind of round, which I think looks more like this one. But if you if your cac if your succulent has a real like a pointy end, all you have to do is grab the the end face and shift space one more time, and then you get like a really pointy uh, end to it. Up to you. Okay. So again, the, the pink dot should be about there. Can hit S to scale it. And then this one, we're going to do the same exact uh, Alt-D on this one. So Alt-D is duplicate the object, and then R, Z. So maybe, let me move these to the side a little bit. So click this one. Alt D R Z. Alt D R Z. Alt D R Z. So now we got five of them. And it's fine that they're not perfectly even because uh, I mean I don't I don't care that they they should be a little bit uneven, honestly. And the cool thing about Alt D is if we ever want to make a change to one of these these pedals, we can go back into faces mode. Let's say I want to make it soft again. I can pick on the end here, go to edges mode, and hit Control X to get rid of that. And then as soon as I go back into object mode, so Control Space down, it updates all the other pedals with our changes. So that's pretty cool. Well, how 
how do I make the pink dot to be in the center? How do I like move it? So there's two options. One way is you can select a face and hit Control Shift right mouse to put the pink dot at the face. So for example, I'll pick this face, Control Shift right mouse. And now the pink dot is there. The other way, or the way that I did it in the demo, was you just grab the faces and move them like that. Just move them so that they're okay. kind of kind of in front of the pink dot. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So another thing is like I, I'm getting this little weird faceting on all of them. So I'm gonna just make a box around all of these guys and then hit Z and Shade Smooth will get rid of those facets for us. And that's it. Okay, so once I have five of these, again, Alt-D, Z, and then R-Z. Maybe scale it a little bit. And then one more time, Alt-D, Z, to lock it up and down. Then left click and then RZ to rotate it on the Z axis and then S to scale it. And you can give these a little bit more life by just you know making some variation on them. But yeah, it's just Alt D and then rotating, scaling a bunch of them. Any questions on this stuff? Um, so you gotta be in object mode, so Make sure you're not in faces mode or any of these top three. You gotta be go control space and go down to object mode. And then you'll be able to do um, Alt D. Did, did you scale them in a bit or did you Yeah, yeah. Each each successive level I scaled them smaller. So that by the top by by the time they get to the top they're smaller. Um, and then also I'm kind of trying to rotate them gradually and make them like a little bit more vertical I guess so I mean you guys know how the pattern goes kind of um, okay so this is cool I think I want to start or I'm just gonna keep, keep arranging these for a minute so the next thing we're gonna do is materials um, for to get the gummy kind of candy looking material. Any questions before we, we keep going? Okay, so let's grab one of these and then um, open this up a little bit. This bottom area here where we've been doing all of our settings I'm going to switch this now. Um, so uh, click on the uh, top left corner of this area, the properties area, and then switch it. So this is properties, and we're going to switch it to shader. So shader is like materials, basically. Shader editor. And it looks very scary. It's just a big grid of nothing. We have to say new up here on the top you should have a new button add a new material okay and this is also very scary there's about a billion settings here but all we have to do is turn on subsurface so where it says subsurface here I'm just gonna drag that way up all the way well actually maybe not all the way but I think that looks kinda cool already and then there's subsurface color and change that to pink. Okay. 
And then there's roughness here. You can make it really shiny, really matte, however you like it. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, pretty easy, right? <laughs> um, what did you set your subsurface value to? Um, I've got uh, a really, really small screen. So. Whatever you want. Whatever looks whatever good. Want. Whatever looks good, okay? And then. Cool. Um, so let me do that one more time in case you missed it. I'm, I'm, we were in properties. I'm going to switch from properties on the top left of the properties area. I'm switching, clicking on that and switching to shader editor. And then go to the right a little bit. You should see new this new button on the top. Hit new. And then you should be able to turn on, just drag this subsurface bar and then also change the color to whatever you want. Cool. So now I'm going to stick it there. And the cool thing about subsurface is it's like it's like a waxy material and it and it reacts to other stuff that's around it. So Notice as, as we move these petals closer to the, the pebbles, they, they change color. Isn't that crazy? Like, it actually looks like what the material <laughs> should be doing. That's so crazy. There it is. Um, it looks like that thing you buy at, like, Michael's, you know? It's for your bathroom plant. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know those like fake plants, plant. the fake succulent plants that you buy for like your bathroom. Are they real or fake? No, oh, they're fake. They're plastic. Oh, okay. So you're saying it looks fake then? <laughs> 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 Thanks. <laughs> no, <laughs> but uh, okay. So we'll, we'll, we can try to make it look more interesting. Maybe um, here. So. There's some really cool texturing stuff that we can do in here. So if I go Shift A inside of the shader area, just like in the modeling area, when we hit Shift A, we can add new models. If we're in the shader area, we hit Shift A, we can add new textures and stuff. So let's go to texture, Shift A, texture, and then um, let's try Musgrave and just plop it down somewhere doesn't matter and then if you hit control shift and left click on Musgrave it'll preview the texture okay so we got something interesting going there we can adjust the scale again it's control shift left click to preview it and left click on the Musgrave to preview it so I'm just gonna adjust it like that and this can be like you can make this into the color, you can make it into the roughness and all that. But basically, I want to use this texture to control the roughness. Um, so if we go back to our, our material and let's check out what the roughness does again. If I put the roughness to zero, it becomes perfectly mirror shiny, super shiny, sharp. If I put the roughness all the way up, it becomes kind of blurry and matte. So that is what this mask is going to do. Basically, wherever you see white, that equals 1 in value. And when, where you see black is 0 in value. So just keep that in mind. Th that corresponds to 0 here and 1 here. So when as soon as we plug this in, it should give us like a mix of 0 and 1 based on that texture. And if we adjust it here, you can change how how big the texture is. Or let's say we wanted to, to use this to control how much subsurface amount we have. So let's, let's try plugging that in there. It's kind of interesting. Well, and if you want to plug it into different um, 
if you want to plug into roughness and subsurface, do you have to duplicate that node? Nope, you can just get it again and go there. Just like that. And now it's controlling both. Um, yeah, so you can reuse this. You can even reuse it and like change the contrast or change the colors on it. So let's say, um, here we put this into, maybe let's see what it looks like on color. It looks pretty crappy. Anyway, so let's put, put it back into roughness and let's say I want to change the contrast of this. I can go con uh, shift A, add, and then search for color ramp, color ramp. It's w all one word, color ramp. So this one is kind of like levels in Photoshop and you can use this to adjust contrast by just dragging these around. So if I get this and plug this one into roughness now, then plug this one into the end here. Now we can move these around and adjust the roughness. And we can also change the color of these. So let's say I don't want it to go fully shiny. I want the minimum value to be like point three or something, all I have to do is click on the the, min, the black color, click on it, and change the value to 0.3. And now the minimum roughness is 0.3 or 0.5 or whatever. We can also mix two different materials like this it gets even more complicated so if we go shift a search for diff this is diffuse bsdf is basically like clay this is just clay so let's go diffuse bsdf stick it in here control shift left click on it and there it is it's like white clay perfect so i want to mix that white clay with our gummy material so i'll go shift a search for mix shader so these two the the diffuse bsdf and the principled bsdf these two guys are shaders so i'm going to go shift a search for mix shaders and just click put this on top of the line there and put this one in so it has two shader slots which are the green ones and we just plug our two shaders in there and then the factor is basically the mixture. So we can go all the way to one side or all the way to the other side, right? But what I really want is to just get this mask, the mask that we created earlier and stick it into the mixture of the two. So now, Now I can mix between the two materials. And if I want to switch, swap it around, maybe I want it, like most of it to be gummy and a little bit to be white. All you have to do is drag, drag and drop these on top of each other. And then they switch. There you go. Got some slightly interesting material. Looks like those uh, frosted rice crackers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Someone's hungry. <laughs> yeah, man. If you don't want to go to the grocery store, just make snacks and blender. Can you slightly change? Can you slightly change start. the shape of one face without changing the others? You can. So right now they they're all linked together, right? So if we change, let's say we make this one pointy. Now all of them are pointy. But if you want it to be so that you can make one unique, you just pick on one that you want to be unique. And then you can go, um, uh, oh shoot, is this it? No, that's not it. Although that's kind of cool. Um, okay, so here you can go to back to properties, back to up here and then properties. And then go down downtown to this 
three little triangle dots thing. And here it tells us that this is the mesh that we're on right now, cube 006. And there's 18 objects in our scene that are using this mesh. And th those are these 18 objects right here, right? They all yeah. u all using the same mesh. So all we have to do where the number 18 is, it says display the numbers of users of this data. Click to make a single user copy. So OK, we're going to click on that. And now it created a copy of that mesh. And now it's cube 007, which means, uh, and, and if I click on these ones, it says now there's 17 objects that are using cube 006, right? These are all using cube 006. And this one is cube 007. So it should be um, separate. Yeah, so now you can edit this one however you need to. Thanks. Mm -hmm. OK, cool. So next, um, the pot. The pot is going to take another material. Let's go back to Shader Editor. Say New. Let's make it this baby blue. I mean, it's kind of good enough for me. I mean, uh, maybe. Um, we could give the, the top a different material maybe. So the way you do that is control space faces. Oh, actually, you know what? We can't do it with the edges. Eh. OK, here's another another thing we can do. We can, let's say there's these like white polka dots on our pot. I can't really see the design, but I'm guessing there's white polka dots. So I'll go Shift A and add uh, a UV sphere. This is going to be like our polka dot mask. So if I press spacebar and hold control while I'm hovering over the the pot, it's going to stick. It's going to stick it. So spacebar and then hold control. It sticks it to the surface of the of the pot, right? And I'm going to pick now when when they're intersecting like this. I'm going to pick this and then shift pick the pot. So the pot should be um, pink and the, the, the UV sphere should be blue. Now we can go uh, control B, which is a Boolean pie, which we, we haven't talked about. But this lets you cut stuff and make wraps and do all sorts of crazy stuff. So on the right side, there's this live wrap. And I'm going to hit that live wrap on the right side. And that's it. It's there. So now we can do Alt D and Alt D again. And I don't know why it's sticking out so damn far. Maybe let me go to properties. I needed to adjust the strength of the uh, the displace modifier here, which is what's making it pop off. But anyway, let me let me do that one more time. Let's say we wanted a square shape on here. I'm going to go Shift A, search for cube, hold Control to snap it to the surface, and then pick this square. Shift pick the the pot. Control B and live wrap. And then we've kind of intersected them. And then adjust the displacement strength. Do you have to rotate the cube so it's perpendicular to the surface first, or does it try and do it for you? Um, it can do it if you. There's snapping options up up at the top here. So if you change it from where it says mix, um, change that to say align rotation, then it'll try to make it fit the surface like that. When you when you hold control, Just go through that step again. Um. Yeah. So let's say we have a cylinder this time. So to get it to snap. I'm pressing spacebar and then holding control to snap. If I want it to rotate also and snap like the direction, 
you go got to go up to here where it says mix and inside there there's an option that says align rotation to target and that'll make it take the direction of your surface okay and I saw I, I, I missed the context because um, I, I was struggling with a previous step but you you went to a into a menu and selected an option as well um, yeah so kind of like so so we select this one and then we select this one and then control V is our boolean boolean pie menu and booleans are like cuts where you can cut stuff and wrap stuff and do shape I don't know I don't know what to anyway you're doing live wrap and that'll kind of wrap this thing around the other thing okay thank you yeah all right so then the last thing guys for the pot I want to be get a little bit more fancy with the material let's go to shader editor again and let's say you want to I mean maybe not this pot but some of the other pots had some really interesting textural detail to them like here this one has some graininess to it so I'm gonna go shift a search for noise just regular noise and then control shift left click on it to preview what the noise looks like and it's pretty pretty fine here um, actually this is not what I want I'm gonna go shift a search for coordinate so C O O R there it is it's the only one C O O R search for coordinate now this one I'm gonna get object and plug it into vector on the noise so object goes to vector and there's the noise we can adjust the the scale of it I'm gonna make it really really tiny by it's it's kind of opposite in blender when you when you bring the scale up it becomes tinier sort of so that's it it's a noise texture uh, node and a texture coordinate node plug the object into the vector of the noise texture and then change the scale all right so then we can use this to control the the bumpiness of the surface so let's go shift a and search for bump this is another node this one plugs into the bottom of this one so bump goes into the normal of the principled BSDF here oops and then the bump takes a height so we're gonna tell the noise texture uh, factor to go into height and so this black and white should control the height now we can go back to the principle control shift left click on it to, pr to see what it looks like it's gonna load up a little bit and there it is it's a little bit too strong so you can adjust the uh, distance of it you can also hold down shift while you're dragging your sliding these around to make it more sensitive and maybe adjust the strength too it's way too strong and distance doesn't seem to really do anything Yeah, and there we go. We got some noise. We can do stuff like um, what if maybe some of these pots they have like grooves that go around the the perimeter, like this one here. It's it looks like kind of scrape scrape lines across the per perimeter of the pot. We can do that too. So if we go here, all we have to do is scale the noise in the sideways direction so it becomes really stretched out sideways. So let's go shift a search for mapping and plug that in here in between the texture coordinate node and the noise node just plug it right there and then we can uh, adjust the scale let's see 
am I doing this wrong? Hmm. What if I make the noise scale a little bit lower so I can see what's happening? And then start scaling it here. Point 0.1, point 0.1. There we go. Point 0.01 on X scale, point 0.01 on Y scale. And then Z scale can be as high as you want it to give you the grooves on the pot. And then we use that on, on the normal. So let's see how that looks. There we go. So Vaughn, all this stuff that you're doing, is it stuff that you've just kind of like done over and over and messed around and experimented with? And then you just kind of like have built your own like library of how to do things? Um, sort of. It's like each of these nodes is, is like a little Lego block and you can use them in all different combinations. And like once you understand what they do, you, you can rearrange them and get anything out of them basically. But it feels like kind of like a lot of experimentation and checking what it looks like. Right? Oh yeah, def definitely. Like I'm, I'm, I don't know everything by heart. So you, you, yeah, you're definitely checking things with the um, control shift left click is is kind of a huge thing because you, it lets you see like preview things isolated kind of. Um, oh, there, there we go. That's kind of cool, right? We can, let's try plugging this into the c the base color and see what that looks like. And you can like reuse stuff from these nodes and, and plug them into different things and you get all these different results. What about if maybe this is cool, but what if we want like a little bit of wobbliness to the lines? So here, here's the crazy thing is you can use noise on top of noise. So let's get this noise and just go shift D to duplicate it and put it over here and maybe bring it back down to one. And let's see what happens if we plug this in here. It's thinking a little bit because now we're get we got a bunch of layers going. Okay, this is not exactly what I expected. Let me let me back out of there. What if we plug it into here, possibly? So yeah, I'm I'm experimenting. I'm not totally sure what the result's going to be, but there we go. That's kind of more what I was looking for. So by, you know, you can give a very small amount of noise to sort of tweak this. I don't know. It's infinite. We could go shift A texture. Let's let's try checkers. What would happen if we plug a checker in here? I have no idea. <laughs> um, here, let's plug the checker into vector. That's kind of cool. So what we're seeing here, like using these uh, texture nodes, which are basically just math equations, um, this is all really cool because it's infinite resolution. You can zoom in like forever and ever, and there's no there's no pixels or anything like that. It's just math. So it's kind of fun to texture stuff this way. Um, and then one other thing, one, okay, this is for sure the last thing, like, there's these little dots everywhere on the, on the pot, so I'm going to go sh shift A, search for icosphere, and make a little dot. So, I'm not going to go around and, like, place all these dots individually, because it'd take too long. So, what we can do instead is go back to properties on the pot, let me save this before it crashes. Um, here, Second. do you and find that there crashes uh, a lot for you? No, it's, it's pretty stable, um, but I just, you know, old habits. Um, so let's see, in here, th this little one right under the wrench is our particles tab. So we can add in stuff like particles. Let's, let's go, let's hit the plus button on the top right of the particles tab. 
that adds a new particle system. And now I'm going to hit here. And actually this isn't working right now because I think because um, because of all these modifiers here. So I unfortunately I'm going to have to apply all this stuff. So because remember in the beginning we started with just this thing and and we can still edit it by the way, which is crazy. And it all works still. But so now I need to freeze all of this in order to do particles. So I'm going to go control A with the with the pot selected and then visual geometry to mesh will kind of get rid of all the previous modifiers and make it all frozen. So when I s when I click on this visual ge visual geometry to mesh, all modifiers are gone. Now if I go to faces, it's all real real geometry and I can no longer um, edit it. So it's a little bit sad, but we we are doing it for the greater good of particles. I don't like that. Yeah, it's I have I have commitment issues. Yeah, it's it's uh locked in. So here's our regular particles, which is not exactly what I wanted. Maybe hair. Also not exactly what I want, but hair hair is kinda cool guys too. You can you can uh sculpt hair. You can go to where it says object mode and switch this to particle edit and then you can start to comb your hair. Let me see actually. Let me make the hair length a lot shorter. This is kind of ridiculous. But yeah, we could go um, up here, particle edit, and like groom it a little bit. This is stupid. I'm not. I'm not actually gonna have hair on it, but just just so you know, it's there. It's kind of looking a bit sparse too. <laughs> Maybe we can give it children hair. Ew. <laughs> it's a little pa a little bit patchy. <laughs> ch 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 chia. <laughs> it looks like Elon Musk now. <laughs> it looks like Elon Musk. Uh, okay. <laughs> So maybe maybe we don't want that type of hair. We want instead of rendering as a path, which is like these little path hair way hair things, I'm gonna switch it under render, switch it from path to object. And now I can choose the where the wherever the hell that thing went. The ICO sphere that we made earlier, just eye drop pick it. And now it should Where is it? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. The scale was too small. And there it is. You just now you just gotta give this one the same material as the as the pot, whatever this is called pot material and that's it okay wow that went a lot longer than I thought it would jeez um, but that's basically it guys you can you can change your your little environments here if you want uh, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> um, before you wrap, do you want to bring up you? You have a, your class registration has is open, right? And oh yeah, yeah. Let me do that. Well, I'll post it in the lecture comms, but yeah, I have. I a already posted a link. But you wanted to yeah. mention something about it. Yeah, class is starting um, June second and fourth. If anyone's interested in more Blender stuff. But yeah, the link is there. It has all the info about it. And it's kind of like this, except it gets a little more complicated. Okay. I took it. It's a good class. Thanks, Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool.
thanks for following along guys if you if you did a pot i hope you post it in the in the discord all right thank you thanks, thank you thank you thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Mm -hmm. thank you see ya thank you